Hello, welcome to the news podcast daily. I'm following today's headlines. European Council President Hetman Van Rompuy begins his official visit to Vietnam. Vietnam and Malaysia are interested in social housing cooperation. Measures to fix consequences of storm sending are underway. The storm claimed seven lives and left four still missing. President of the European Council Herman Van Rompuy began his official visit to Vietnam on October 31st. His trip is seen indicating the European Union's wishes to step up cooperation with the Southeast Asian country. This is the first visit to Vietnam of a European Council president since the European Union and Vietnam set up diplomatic ties in 1990. A welcome ceremony for Van Rompuy and his entourage was held at the presidential palace the same day. At the following talks, President Chiang Tien Sang and the European Council president discussed regional and international matters of mutual concern and proposed ways of raising bilateral ties at various forums. President Sang spoke highly of Van Rompuy's visit. He said Vietnam attaches a lot of importance to bilateral relations with the EU and hopes to increase cooperation to match the potential and position of both sides. In reply, Van Rompuy stated that his visit illustrates the EU's appreciation of the increasing position and role that Vietnam plays in the dynamic region. He said he wants to look at more closely Vietnam's socio-economic situation as well as its successful journey along the road to renovation and international integration. Van Rompuy went on to say that the visit is also a chance for both sides to exchange their views on bilateral cooperation under the broader framework of the Vietnam-EU Partnership and Cooperation Agreement. Prime Minister Nguyen Tân Dũng and former Malaysian Prime Minister Abdullah Ahmad Badawi showed interest in cooperation in building social houses at the meeting in Hanoi on October 30th. We have more. Prime Minister Dũng said he was pleased to see the former Malaysian Prime Minister, whom he regarded as a close friend of Vietnam. He stated that Vietnam pays special attention to the development of social housing, especially in the current difficult situation. The country will create the best possible conditions for Malaysian businesses to invest in the field, Zoom said. In reply, Bazawi said he and his accompanying construction businesses are very keen on teaming up with Vietnam in the construction sector, particularly in building social houses. The former Malaysian Prime Minister affirmed that he will continue to do his best to consolidate the ties between Vietnam and Malaysia. Vietnam will look to develop urban areas environmentally friendly when recognizing an indispensable urbanization for its socio-economic development process. City leaders met in Hanoi on October 13th to look at actions needed to take to achieve the goal. The Ministry of Construction reported that the country now has 760,000 cities, which contribute around 70% of the national GDP annually. However, it was the fact that these areas had failed to meet the country's development demands, especially in dealing with the impacts of climate change and environmental pollution. Urban areas in Vietnam, especially the big ones, are facing pressing matters such as traffic jams, being inundated when having torrential rains, and illegal construction. In the coming time, urban management should be put into consideration in urban development process. For foreign experts present at the conference, improving the quality of urban areas requires the involvement of not only policymakers and managers, but also average citizen. The country should adopt new approaches to push up the development of green urban area. It should also learn lessons from international experiences in sustainable urban development, they said. The conference was held by the Vietnam Urban Forum, the Ministry of Construction, and the Cities Alliance. 
Storm Sunting, the eighth that hit Vietnam this year, had left seven dead, four missing, and 90 others injured as by October 31st. The figures were reported by the Central Steering Committee for Flood and Storm Prevention. Surmountable efforts are underway. The storm ripped down the roofs of more than 13,200 houses in central and northern provinces where it went through. It also broke down 174 vessels and damaged nearly 2,900 meters of dice and more than 2,100 meters of dams. Under the Prime Minister's order on October 29, the electric city of Vietnam has so far restored the supply of electric city to the affected provinces. The Vietnam Post and Telecommunications Corporation, the military-run telecoms group Retail, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development are jointly working on restoring communications in these localities. The local authorities themselves have been helping out with production restoration and house repairs to enable storm hit victims to resume their daily routines as quickly as possible. A huge blaze broke out in a wood workshop in Vinkyu district, southern Dongnai province, on October 30. When joining in instigation the fire, 21 workers got injured, of whom 16 are suffering from severe burns. Here's an update on the victims. According to doctors at Thom Nhat General Hospital in Dong Nai province, 15 of the seriously injured were taken to a specialist treatment unit of Chia Rai Hospital in Ho Chi Minh City. Of them, four have severe burns and are in critical condition. Witnesses said dozens of people were working at the workshop when the fire broke out. While 21 of the workers are inside trying to put out the fire, there was a big explosion, followed by a fireball that enveloped the workshop, preventing them from escaping to safety. Local firefighters and workers outside the building successfully extinguished the fire after 30 minutes. The local authorities are currently investigating the case. The seventh roundtable meeting of ASEAN educational leaders and the fifth Southeast Asia School Principals Forum are taking place in the central coastal city of Nha Trang to touch upon the training of gifted students. As the first of their kind ever held in Vietnam, the events brought together nearly 100 delegates from ASEAN member countries and experts from international organizations like UNESCO and UNICEF. During the course of three days, participants introduced the latest models of training and fostering gifted students as a high-quality human resource for national development. Deputy Minister of Education and Training Nguyen Vinh Hien said Vietnam is one of high-performing countries at international contests. However, the country will invest more in teaching methods, curricular and research facilities for young scientists in the coming term. On the occasion, Malaysia transferred its chairmanship of the Roundtable Meeting of ASEAN Educational Leaders and the Southeast Asia School Principals Forum to Singapore for the next two-year tenure. ASEAN Secretary General Surin Pitswan has said sovereignty disputes in the East Sea could become violent, but ASEAN member states and China are showing a sense of urgency in trying to ease tensions. Pitswan told reporters on the sidelines of the meeting in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, on October 30th that good sides have been seen during informal talks between the 10 nation group and China in the Thai resort of Pattaya. This peace in the EC will be a major topic at the upcoming ASEAN summit in Cambodia from November 15th to 20th. A job COC will be tabled for discussion. At the summit, ASEAN leaders will also discuss the birth of an ASEAN economic community, energy security, environment, trade, investment, infrastructure connectivity, and sustainable development. Leaders of the U.S., the Republic of Korea, China, and Japan are expected to attend the event. And that is the end of our news today. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.